Hey there guys, in this video I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be going into the basics of 3D modeling, specifically for 3D printing, by showing you how to model and design this basic headphone holder in Fusion 360. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with 3D modeling, so I added in an extra slightly less known bonus feature at the end of the build that might help you out in your 3D printing modeling journey. So if you want to find out what that is, stick around to the end because this bonus tip might very well be worth your while, even if you're advanced. So in this video, I'm gonna start out by telling you a little bit why I chose Fusion 360 as opposed to other CAD software. Then I'm gonna show you how to conceptualize and uh, do a basic design for what it is you wanna create. Then I'm gonna jump into Fusion 360 and sketch out our design into fully functioning three-dimensional object that you can 3D print. I'm gonna also show you how to finish your model off using chamfers. And like I said before, I'm gonna show you guys a really cool bonus feature that lets you truly customize your designs in seconds. Super cool. Then we're gonna print out the design and take a look at the final result. So if you're new to the whole world of 3D modeling, or maybe you just wanna brush up a bit on your already expansive set of skills, stick around and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna get into with you guys is why exactly it is that I picked Fusion 360 for this video series. So I kinda of wanna start out by saying that I have a degree in industrial design, and when I was studying university, one of the most powerful tools I learned was 3D modeling. However, the program that I learned 3D modeling on was SolidWorks. Um, for those that don't know, SolidWorks is an extremely powerful 3D CAD software that's generally used in high level manufacturing and corporations. But the reason I chose Fusion 360 for this video series, as opposed to SolidWorks, which I have a lot more experience with, is for a couple of reasons, actually. The first reason is because Fusion 360 is free for personal use. I mean, you don't have to pay anything unless you want to sell the models that you're making, in which case, it's debatable whether to use Fusion 360 or possibly another CAD software like SolidWorks. The second reason that I chose Fusion 360 is because I find it's a lot simpler to kind of get into in the beginning than SolidWorks is. The third reason is although there are a lot of other CAD softwares out there like Tinkercad, Blender, and a whole bunch of others that are completely and totally free is I think that Fusion 360 has a really good balance of functionality and simplicity, especially for the price being free, of course. That, of course, is, again, debatable. Um, but truth is, Blender might be the right option for you if you're looking to design more organic shapes and you're less focused on functionality. For example, if you want to design miniatures and stuff like that for Dungeons & Dragons, you might want to look into Blender because designing organic shapes in CAD is really difficult and super annoying because CAD software isn't really designed for that. But enough about that, let's get into the design process. The first thing I like to do when designing something for 3D print is banging out a few sketches on a piece of paper so I can kind of visualize what it is that I wanna get done. And that can really help you streamline and optimize your design process. So the next step, once we have our sketch done and we have our design planned out and visualized is getting down the right dimensions. And for this, we're gonna need a caliper, probably one of the most useful 3D printing accessories you can have if you're gonna be modeling your own stuff. By the way, I left an affiliate link for an awesome caliper down in the description. Using a caliper, I'm gonna measure the height of the shelf I wanna hook this up to, and measuring the width of the headband for the headphones so we get the right dimensions. Once we've got that done, we could just jot it down next to the sketch we made earlier, and now we can finally jump into CAD. Okay, so once we jump into Fusion 360, for those that aren't familiar with this software, I'm gonna give a short explanation on how to navigate so you don't get lost, and you could just get started expanding your creativity without having to deal with all kinds of craziness. So the first thing you're gonna see when we jump into Fusion 360 is a large canvas. That's where we're gonna be modeling our part. On the top, we have our toolbar. That's where we have most of the tools that we need to get the job done. On the bottom left, we have our model history tree. This will show you step by step the different actions that you've carried out so far and let you return to one if you wanna make any kind of modifications. On the top right, 
of the canvas, we can see there's a little box. This shows us where the camera angle is in relation to the model. This is a super useful feature because you can use this to adjust your perspective very quickly. I find the easiest way to navigate around your model is by using your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out and change your view by holding down shift and the scroll wheel button. All right, so once we have that basic navigation out of the way, we can finally jump into the fun stuff. And we're gonna start out by picking a plane to sketch on. We're gonna be using the top plane for this, so let's jump in. Let's go. Now, let's start out by changing our perspective to view the model from the top by using the top of our little navigation box in the top right corner. Let's pick the Create Sketch option from our toolbar on the left side. Now we can click on the blue square, which is our top plane. And once we do, we can see that the toolbar kind of changes on the top and gives us some drawing tools we can use to sketch out our profile. Let's start out by doing something I always like to do when designing, and that is using a construction line. This is a super important feature that can really help you out later on in your 3D modeling game. And it gives you a great idea of scale and dimension right off the bat. The way we do this is we're going to pick the line tool on the left and draw a line roughly in the center of the canvas. Once we got that down, we can right click on the line and it will open up a list for us of additional functions. We're looking for the normal construction option. This will let you get a line that won't be registered as, as a functional part of your sketch by Fusion, but it still lets you work around it. Super useful in my opinion. All we gotta do is just center it up. On the toolbar, we have the coincident option. When we pick it, we can hover over the center of our construction line while we're holding shift. And this little X thing kind of comes up. Click that and the middle point of our sketch while holding the control key to se select them both. And ta-da, the line is centered. Now, once we have a basic idea of scale and dimension and our center line is already drawn out, we can start on the sketch profile. So let's go. I'm gonna start by drawing a basic rectangle above our center line. I can use the sketch dimension tool to give it a thickness of let's say five millimeters. This thing is gonna be one of the two arms I'm gonna to use to hug the headphone hook onto the shelf. Now to create the other arm, we're going to go into the create dropdown menu and pick the mirror option. This will let us mirror the rectangle we just made by selecting it and then selecting the construction line and poof, we have two identical arms. Now we have to space the arms out at a distance of 18 millimeters from each other. So they fit nice and tight on that shelf we measured before. There are a few ways to do this, but of course I like using the construction line. So I'm gonna draw another construction line between the two under parts, between the two inner parts of the arms and give it a set distance of 18 millimeters. And boom, you can see both of the arms move together at an equal distance of each other because we mirrored them earlier. By the way, this shows that pre-planning your CAD model can make life way easier down the line. Next, I'm gonna draw out the rest of the profile using splines. Splines are useful for designing custom rounded shapes because once the line is drawn, you can twist and manipulate the tangent to what you want by dragging these little points. Once I got the basic shape I want, I'm just gonna finish up by closing the profile with simple lines. And I'm gonna cut the internal lines of the two rectangles we drew earlier. You don't really have to do this in Fusion 360, but I'm still kinda used to SolidWorks, so. Anyway, once we have a fully closed shape, the profile will turn blue. This means it's time to extrude our shape. Okay, so now that we're done with our sketch part, we can finally turn the profile we made into a 3D printable shape. This can be done in a few different ways, but in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the basics and using maybe one of the most powerful, most often used features in CAD. And that of course is the extrude function. So let's jump back in and let me show you how to do it. Come on. Once the profile of our sketch is blue, we can finish the sketch by choosing the option from the top right of our toolbar. At this point, we see that the toolbar on the top changed back and gives us the 3Dizing features we had before we opened the sketch. At this point, I like to move the perspective around to kind of like a little bit like an isometric view by holding shift and the scroll wheel button and dragging the mouse. So I can see it from a bit of a different angle and not just from the top. At this point, we can pick the extrude option from the left side of the toolbar. And as soon as we do that, 
we get this little window pop-up thingy. When possible, I find it's best practice to extrude the object from the middle and have both sides extrude together equally. In this particular case, it doesn't really matter, but once you start building more complicated multi-part models, it will definitely make a huge difference. So let's pick the symmetric option in the direction tool. And now we can either extrude the profile by dragging the arrows or giving it a, a specific dimension. In this case, I'm just going to drag it out until I think it looks good. And once we got it the way we want it, we can hit OK. And boom, we have a 3D object. But at this point, it kind of looks a little bit boring. So let's spice it up a bit with some chamfers. We can pick them out under the modified drop down menu. And now we can pick the lines or faces we want to chamfer and give them a dimension. And once that's done, it still looks a little bit boring. So basically at this point, you can print it out and have a fully functioning model. But like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna add in a bonus tip that's slightly more advanced. But I really think that this is a super useful way of customizing your 3D models and making them truly your own and really awesome. But first, before I get into the bonus tip, if you find that you're getting value from this video, please consider subscribing to this tiny channel and maybe like the video so I can keep bringing out more content for you guys. At this point, I just wanna stop for a second and show some gratitude and say thank you to all those wonderful people that have been following my tiny channel and, and all the people that have put down some amazing, super insightful comments in my previous videos. I, I just really wanna say thank you, um, but let's move on. Okay, so at this point, the headphone holder still seems kind of boring. And I want to spice it up with a custom logo. Now, I kind of want to put the logo on a curved surface on the front right above where the headphones go. But because the surface is curved, I can't make a sketch there. But the upside, however, is since it's curved, I get to show you this awesome tool called Emboss. And this is the bonus tip. Let's jump in. So the first thing we're gonna do is start a new sketch on the top plane and draw a line at an angle kind of perpendicular to the face we want to project our sketch onto. It doesn't have to be perfect. Close is good enough in this case. And once we're done with that, we can finish the sketch and now we can create a sketchable face called a plane using that perpendicular line we just made as a path. By going over to the Construct drop-down menu and picking the Plane Along Path option. This will give us a nice sketchable surface to draw our design on. Once we see the plane materialize, we can move it to where we want it along the line we made by dragging the little arrow. This seems about right. Now we can click OK and start our sketch on the newly formed plane. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using my logo. And I want to show you how to emboss using a pre-designed SVG image. For those of you that are unfamiliar, an SVG is a type of file that uses lines and curves called vectors. What's really cool about vectors is that no matter how big or small you scale them, they won't distort. And maybe even cooler than that is that you can use the SVG files for laser cutting and CNC, or in this case, 3D modeling. If you want to learn more about how to make SVG files for free, I linked a really straightforward video tutorial in the description. But enough about that, let's jump back in. So now that my sketch is open on the plane we made, I'm going to pick my logo SVG file by choosing the insert tab on the right side of the toolbar on top and pick the insert SVG option and choose the file for my logo. Once we got that done, I see it's a bit too big, backwards and sideways. So I'm gonna adjust it using the circle angle adjust tool and scaling it in the option window and moving it into the position using the little square and poof, we're ready to project the image onto our model. So to do this, I'm gonna finish the sketch and go up to the create drop-down menu and pick the emboss tool. And now I can click on the profile of the image I wanna project onto my model, essentially the SVG, and then I can choose the face I wanna project it onto. By the way, if you have more than one face on your model, you can choose multiple faces by holding down control and selecting more faces. But for this video, one face is just fine. Now I want the logo to be sunk in instead of embossed. And that's super simple. All we gotta do is just pick the deboss button right under the depth option in the window on the right and Bob's your uncle, we're done. Okay, so now that we're done our model, we can save it, export it to an STL file, and send it off to our printer.
And with that, I saved like 10 bucks on Amazon. No, I'm just, just kidding. Okay, so I kind of want to get into a Fusion 360 tutorial series on my channel. And I want to get more into how to design things for 3D printing and making some cool projects. If you think that this is something you might like, uh, let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. If you like this one, you might like this one next. All right, take care for now, guys. Bye.